Hello, everyone. I am Janet Brown, Director of Membership for AOCS. Thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar Wednesday. Uh, one little housekeeping note, all attendees are muted. Should you need assistance or have a question, please use the chat box on the right hand side. Today, we're going to hear from an AOCS Gold corporate member, Solex Thermal Science, a global leader in bulk solids heat transfer technology regarding their innovative oil seed conditioning solution. Our speakers include Stan Paula and Pedro Moran. I'm going to pass this over to you, Stan, Global Sales Director at Solex Thermal Science. Thank you, Janet. Um, good morning or good afternoon, everybody, depending on the location where you are joining from. I would like to thank you for joining us today at this webinar focus on the plate technology and all its conditioning. My name is uh, Stan Pawa, and within Solex Thermal Science, I'm responsible for oil seeds applications globally. I joined Solex about nine years ago, and my background is a mechanical engineer with focus on heat transfer. I'm based in Europe. However, during my time at Solex, I also helped developing the oil seeds applications at our headquarters in Canada for about three years. Actually, before we get into the point and to this interesting topic of this webinar, my colleague and manager of our food division, Pedro Moran, will shortly introduce our company. Handing over to you, Pedro. Well, thank you for uh, for the introduction, Stan. It's uh, it's a pleasure to join you and uh, everyone else in this uh, webinar. I would like first to thank uh, AOCS and uh, for this opportunity, and in particular to Janet, Amy, and the rest of, uh, of their team for supporting uh, in the organization. Uh, it's uh, it's a pity that we were not able to to attend this year annual meeting and Expo in Montreal. Uh, anyway, we look forward to the virtual sessions and to the next edition in uh, in 2021. Um, also, I would like to to say a note here. I hope everyone is safe under the current circumstances here in Europe and specifically in in Spain, where where I'm based. Uh, we face quite a critic, critical situation, but uh, we are uh, gradually getting back to a certain level of uh, normal activity. Uh, I'm uh, doing this webinar from home, as many of you are attending from home. Uh, I would like to. Uh, Apologize in advance if, uh, if you can hear my kids in the in the background at any time. Um, uh, I uh, I've been with Solex for about more than ten years now, and I work closely with uh, with the stand within the food products division, which includes the the oil seeds applications. I started with Solex uh, in London, uh, but then I moved to uh, South America, where I spent four years setting up our office in in Sao Paulo and taking care of uh, our activities in, in South America, where I was involved in several uh, of six, uh, all six projects uh, over there. Um, I would like to give you a, a quick general uh, overview of the development of the indirect plate heat exchanger technology over the years. Um, this technology was uh, actually uh, developed by the engineering department of, uh, of Cominco. One of the one of the main Canadian mining companies. Uh, it was developed in the fertilizer division. Uh, the first application was for uh, cooling uh, granulated urea, and the first units were installed in uh, in the plant in Carlsland in Alberta in 1988. Uh, those units are are still in in operation. In uh, 1999, uh, Bulk Flow Technology was established uh, as an independent company, and uh, it was uh, followed by a, a management buyout. And uh, this uh, name, Bulk Flow, is sometimes uh, still recognized for, in, you know, especially in the fertilizer industry. Uh, focusing on oil seeds, in, in 2006, the first uh, canola installation was commissioned in, was commissioned in Canada. Uh, followed uh, by the first soybean and rapeseed installations in Europe in 2007. Uh, then in, in 2008, uh, our company changed the corporate name and branding to, to Solex Thermal to, to better reflect the, reflect the expertise in, uh, in book solids uh, heat exchange. And in the last few years, uh, there's been uh, 
uh, installations in US, uh, in, in Europe, uh, South America, and, and lately in, in Asia as well, for uh, different type of oil seeds, uh, soybeans, rape seeds, and, and sunflower as well. Um, we're going to show a map uh, where uh, you can see uh, the countries where the indirect play heat exchanger technology uh, has been installed for either cooling, uh, heating, or uh, drying uh, slash uh, conditioning. Um, uh, there are some uh, confidentiality agreement in place with several of our main clients, and we kind of provide the specific details of all the plants where the technology has been used. But uh, roughly speaking, we, uh, you know, the, the technology has been installed in more than 600 uh, plants in about uh, 50 countries worldwide. Uh, in, in Europe, uh, in particular, uh, many plants selected uh, the technology for uh, rape seed conditioning uh, prior to flaking, uh, based uh, especially on energy recovery features that, uh, you know, Stan will provide uh, some uh, further details uh, during the presentation. Also, in Europe, there, were, there are some uh, multi-product switch plants using uh, vertical plate conditioners. Uh, in North America, uh, the predominant installations uh, are for conditioning canola and, 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 and soybeans. And in South America, uh, the vertical plate conditioners um, were used to replace uh, several traditional equipment in cold hauling installations. Um, Generally speaking, uh, the indirect plate heat exchanging technology um, offers several advantages, uh, whether it's used for cooling, uh, heating, or conditioning. First of all, this is, is an ultra-efficient heat exchange, uh, which can provide energy savings depending on, on the plant uh, circumstances. Uh, the, um, uh, the heat exchange is indirect, and it's, uh, it provides nearly zero emissions because there's no big flows of air use. Um, the product can reach uh, uh, more uniform temperatures, and it's generally hand handled. Um, the, the operation is very reliable. It's a static uh, piece of equipment and uh, has low maintenance. So I would like now to hand over uh, Stan and thank him once again, everyone, for taking part uh, in the webinar. Uh, as Janet mentioned, if there are any questions during the presentation, you can post them on the on the chat, and there will be a, a Q and a, uh, a slot of time at the end of the presentation for any uh, questions uh, you may have. So, uh, well, Stan, please go ahead. Thank you, Pedro. Uh, so. What is the plate technology and vertical plate conditioners? Generally, the plate technology itself allows for very efficient heat transfer that combines conductivity between the oil seeds and heating fluid and low volume purge air. Generally, the product flows by gravity between the heat transfer plates. Um, as, uh, as you can see, the black arrows, uh, they are indicating the, the, the direction in a very low velocity, approximately two feet or 0 0.5 meters per minute. And the low velocity has a benefit in a very low or no abrasion. Then the flow of air has a vertical direction. And the reason for injecting the air is to absorb the moisture that is being evaporated during the heating process and carry the moisture out of the conditioner. Then the plates uh, you can see on the right picture are fully welded with uh, double welding, protecting the product from the contamination and allow in hot water condensate or steam as a heating medium. And all the plates are certified to a pressure vessel code and are suitable for the for the range of uh, steam pressure independently with um, and uh, obviously within the safety limits each plate is of course connected independently with flexible connections allowing thermal expansion without the risk of uh, valves cracking all plates are made out of stainless steel to to the project needs Well, then uh, the, the vertical plate conditioners are, are a combination of the plate technology itself built into standard or Tyler made solutions. Uh, we, can, we can call the sections also as modules, uh, as you can see on the top picture. And uh, with the optimized air sections provide 
heating and conditioning of oil seeds before the crushing process on the slide shown below. Uh, modular design itself is particularly suitable for a combination of waste energy recovery in the top sections of the conditioners, and the lower parts will accommodate steam for powerful evaporation of the moisture. Between the heating sections, you can notice optimized air modules that have adjustable louvers for optimizing the drying performance in order to achieve even drying across the entire bed of, of product. And the air sections are boxed with air manifolds with access hatches for easy cleaning. And for an easy, and for an easy installation, the manifolds can be either welded uh, to the air sections or bolted. The flow of, of product is controlled by a discharge feeder in a way that the conditioner is entire time of uh, operation full of the product. Uh, basically, the plates cannot be exposed. The conditioners are controlled by the, by the temperature and amount of the heating media. And the drying rate is then controlled again by the heat intake, providing the actual evaporation. And the amount of air controls only the saturation inside the conditioner. Generally, the plate technology within the soybean industry is offered with dimensions of the common vertical seed conditioners, and generally we'll be talking about uh, of uh, 11 by 11 feet or 8 by 8 feet plate modules. And this standardization offers easy replacement of the entire conditioner or just the module, or just the module itself. Well, as a result of uh, an increased interest in vertical plate conditioners, we want to understand the reasons uh, for this demand. Uh, and based on the feedback from the processors, we, we summarized the motivation um, for, for this interest. First one, and very common, is uh, that there is a low-grade energy available at the plant, mostly from another processes. And there is an economical and environmental motivation to reduce the seam consumption in the preparation process. And this has been quite necessary to remain competitive and obviously savings in the processing cost will go, will go directly to the, to the bottom line. Um, the second one probably will be increase of production, uh, generally studying the, the total crushing rates over the long term period and we can say uh, over 30 years. We can see that the total crushing amount is, is growing, especially in North America. And obviously this, this needs to be followed by the crushing capacity. And it's difficult not to notice that, uh, that the production rates at many plants have been maxed up. And the producers are looking for options how to increase the production rate at the general minimum capex. Then another motivation would be that some of the installations are simply too old, with plants still using the, the older technology, for example, cold or, or the hauling process. That obviously were revolutionary at the, at the time of installations, however, step by step, these old installations become obsolete and, and replaced by more efficient technology, for example, switching to warm dehauling with much less energy demand. Another reason uh, we're finding uh, as very important uh, is that uh, we often hear uh, we often hear that uh, the actual condition of the existing equipment um, and uh, very high maintenance cost requiring tubes replacement in a in a rotary or vertical seat conditioner. Uh, the bed condition is usually caused either by abrasion or belts cracking due to the thermal stress, as all these equipments run on steam only. And uh, also common reason is, to, is uh, the increased moisture in the seeds that obviously differs from one region to another. But we also hear that uh, it's a common issue of soybean imported from, from Latin America, for example, or canola from, from Canada. And in terms of the existing equipment, it is an issue as it was designed to a certain specification, uh, mostly for lower moisture removal capacity. And, and, and again, this is an issue for the quality of the final product or the producers need to simply decrease the production rate to meet the downstream product specification resulting in, uh, in significant production losses. Um, but, but generally, we can say that uh, in many cases, a majority of the cases, uh, when the producers will decide to investigate and invest into a new solution, they are facing more than just one of the above reasons, and uh, usually it's a, it's a combination.
Well, the, the heat recovery is, a, is generally a very powerful topic, um, allowing the producers to achieve higher processing margins and stay competitive. The price of the oil and milk commodity is something that producers probably are unable to influence directly. However, the cost of production can be optimized and taking the fact that this steam consumption accounts for about a quarter of the total processing cost into consideration, the reduction on steam consumption makes perfectly sense. This also, need, this also can be connected to government subsidies for energy and CO2 emission, CO2 emission savings. Well, when the oil seas producers decide to investigate, first, uh, the source of waste is waste energy and its recoverability needs to be assessed. In a typical soybean processing plant during the years of Solex presence, we have identified major sources of waste energy as uh, and in majority it will be a flash, flash, uh, flash stream, uh, flash steam or condensate from extraction process cooling of a uh, gas engine or gas turbine for the efficient operation, vapors from DTDC, especially from the drying section, boiler flue gases uh, connected to, to the economizer, and, and in general other sources from another processes. And uh, usually the, the processors will specify uh, the sources uh, to us because they know the plants uh, much better than we do. And uh, in, a, in a typical, in a typical uh, layout or, or process flow on the screen, um, and you can see the extraction process uh, diagram, uh, you can see the position of waste uh, heat streams. And it's difficult not to notice that the majority of available heat uh, for the recovery is a byproduct from the variety of processes in the entire all seeds extraction or plant, we can say. When investigating each source, we'll clearly notice that majority will be so-called low grade heat and from the definition low grade heat low, low grade waste heat actually is the process heat that is usually discharged to the environment as its recovery and utilization within the process is not viable unless we find a technology for for its recovery Well, regarding the uh, regarding the plate technology, we can say that uh, that the technology itself can actually challenge the low grade heat. And with a smart integration into a vertical plate conditioner, a large portion of the heat available can be actually recovered. For this purpose, we can use one of the advantages, and it is modular design. On the screen, you can see a stack up of individual modules, and dedicate few top few top modules to bring the waste energy back into the process. Typical arrangement will be, will be with a hot water recovery loop uh, only on the slide on the left side or hot water and flash steam on the right side uh, of the slide. With the source of uh, low grade heat on the primary side uh, of, the, of the hot water loop and obviously it can be a multiple source and solex conditioner with the seeds on the, on the secondary side. Generally, there are a number of variables that will influence efficiency of the recovery. However, the heat transfer area is one of them. We can dedicate number of heating modules only for the, for the recovery. On the diagram, we, we, dedicate, we dedicated four modules. However, in reality, we'll see between one and, and four modules per, per one conditioner as a, as a maximum. And actually adding more sections will not bring the effect as the, as the temperature of the seats inside the conditioners will we already reached the temperature that, uh, that the further recovery will not be efficient. And we can say that in average, um, just in one heating module or sections with the size uh, of uh, 11 by 11 feet, we can climb about five kilograms or approximately 10 pounds of steam per ton of soybean processed. And for example, with four modules, we'll be getting to around 20 kilograms of steam saved per ton of soy processed. Um, and obviously, the first sections uh, at the top, uh, due to the lower temperature of, uh, of, of, of the product, will be more efficient than the bottom one. And in total, for example, for a 5,000 tons per day production plant, the saving will represent around 600,000 USD per year. And return on the investment will be between one and two years, assuming, uh, assuming 20 USD per ton of steam, but obviously it's, it's, it's changing. Um, but but you know when but obviously for each case the savings need to be calculated individually.
With the definition of low-grade waste energy, we have learned that generally it is a type of energy that is very difficult to recover due to its low temperature and um, we can say condensate around uh, 200 degree F Fahrenheit hot oil in the, in the range of 160 to 200 degree Fahrenheit vapors around 170 to 180. Um, theoretically, the, the maximum heat recovery that would be possible would happen if the temperature of the, of the source of the waste heat would equal the temperature of the seeds at the inlet of the vertical plate conditioner. So the gap between the green arrow and the blue arrow on the screen would be zero, or there wouldn't be any gap. However, in the real world, this is impossible and would result as in any infinitive size of the heat transfer area. So following the thermodynamics law, it is obvious that if we want to target for an efficient wheat transfer recovery, in the formula on the right-hand side, we'll need to minimize logarithmic mean temperature difference between the waste heat and the seeds. And, the, and as a result of this equation, we'll need a very large heat transfer area. We can definitely claim that the plate technology can offer this advantage of a very dense heat transfer area. And if we, for, for example, compare plates on this and on the slide on, on the right uh, with tubes on the left, that are a very common solution within the oil seeds industry in the form of vertical seed conditioners, uh, eventually rotating conditioners. We can say that both technologies use similar principle of heat transfer and mass flow. Both technologies are very efficient solution, especially if we do not consider heat recovery due to the nature of the technology. However, the play technology can offer twice as much heat transfer area within the same space and the heat recovery uh, at the same time. For example, uh, one heating section with a typical dimensions of, as I mentioned, 11 by 11 feet and three feet high offers more than 4,300 square feet of heat transfer area which is literally twice as much. And being able to process more product within an existing space is, is important for plants that are looking to increase the production capacity without having to undertake significant retrofit uh, renovations. Simply, you cannot install more tubes uh, into the same area and uh, they would have to occupy additional space mostly outside of the existing processing plants. And, it, and, and, and basically it means additional investment into new building or platforms, new transportation of the product to and out of the conditioner and uh, new utilities uh, distribution. Well, um, as I already mentioned, uh, if the producers choose the plate technology to recover low grade energy from a waste heat source, it needs to be with the help of a heat transfer medium and it will, will be most likely hot water or fly steam. The hot water loop will have at least two heat exchangers, unless the source of, is, a, is a condensate that can go directly into the conditioner. So the first heat conditioner will be for the source of the heat, of the waste heat, and second one will be vertical plate conditioner. In both, we'll need the closest temperature approach as possible, and this can be done only if the hot water loop operates with lowest flow rate as possible. However, the limitation is the minimum critical velocities inside the heat exchanger, and they need to be maintained for a turbulent flow inside the, inside the plates. Otherwise, the distribution of the hot water inside will be poor. Due to the profile, profile of the plates, there are two that generally are two welded metal sheets. And after an expansion as a production step, they have corrugation. And at the same time, the possibility to, to integrate certain number of internal passes to increase the velocity inside the plates if needed. This means that plates in general can maintain much lower flow rate necessary for a maximum economical heat recovery and still maintain efficient heat transfer. Um, and actually this is uh, another, another one of the major uh, advantages of the plate technology and its feasibility for the, for the heat recovery. Uh, for this reason, majority of the heat recovery installations actually will have plates. So we have learned that for an efficient heat transfer recovery, we'll need a large heat transfer area. However, each organization has a, or company, has a different maximum time for the, for the ROI, for the return on investment. 
And this needs to be considered for the, for the total investment. As you can see on the graph on the right, uh, the, the, the more heat we want to recover, the heat transfer area is growing exponentially. So at certain size of the heat exchanger, the payback time becomes too long. And generally the, the, the entire project can be easily killed. Therefore, it is important to find a sweet spot considering other circumstances that are influencing recovery rate, like summer and winter conditions, uh, which is, you will see on the graph on the left, where winter offer much bigger opportunity for the heat recovery due to low sea temperature at the inlet, or the quality of waste source, for example, saturation of the vapors uh, from, the, from the DC and many other considerations. However, with, with today's thermal modeling software, it is relatively easy to us to, to fine tune this system and find the best acceptable, acceptable solution. Excuse me. Very quickly, I would like to I would like to mention the sources of heat at a typical canola plant, and, and actually it will be uh, vapors from from the cooker, press and refined oil, uh, or condensate uh, or flash steam, boiler flue gases uh, from the economizer, the same as uh, as for soybean plants, gas turbine or engine, the same as as for soybean, and or eventually any other source from other processes. An actual position of the waste heat uh, you can see on the on the flow diagram in the red color. And putting the numbers behind each source will help us to estimate amount of recovery. Generally for canola, we'll need to follow the same rules for the heat recovery as for soybean, like geographical location. For the locations makes it easier for the recovery, obviously, because of the larger delta T acceptable return on investment, quality of the energy source. Here for, for canola, the biggest chunk in savings represents vapors from the cooker. And therefore there will be needed additional equipment like, uh, like a condenser, for example. The difference to soybean, however, is, the, is that most of the installations uh, on, on canola will be, will, will be only for heating and eventually some amount of drying in case uh, of the hexane extraction process depending on the source of canola. Uh, however, uh, however, also for the double process, the plate conditioners can offer up to 4% uh, drying. The amount of heat recovery pattern of product uh, processed uh, will be larger than on soybean. On the slide, you can see up to 60 kilograms per ton of product. And in many cases, the heating will be fully covered by the, uh, by the waste energy. And eventually, only the bottle banks of the conditioner will run on steam if needed. Here again, we aim to fit into three to four years of payback time. Here in Canora is more consumption in test uh, preparation process due to the cooking uh, process. However, also offers more opportunity for the, for, the, for the heat recovery. Well, switching to how to warm the hauling. Uh, many soybean plants are operating with the with the hot dehauling arrangement. However, it means that they have to operate a jet dryer to achieve required moisture level as specified by the downstream process and achieve easy dehauling. However, the trend nowadays is to build warm dehauling crushing plants. The difference is that all the conditioning uh, is done in the in the conditioner itself. And we can say that uh, this is very easy to achieve in, a new, in, in new plants that are built completely with, uh, with, with new equipment and with a new plant, plant layout. However, majority of the global demands, especially in North America and South America on the, on the crushing capacity is already covered with the existing plants that have cold or hot dehauling process. So converting cold dehauling process to warm dehauling represents already a significant investment Although, although plate conditions are also suitable for cracked uh, soybean uh, heating before flaking. So more often we see plants converting from hot to warm dehauling. And, but the issue is that the existing conditions were not built in order to provide sufficient drying and heating capacity. Therefore, the existing units need to be replaced uh, with, the, with the new ones. However, if you, want to, if you want to replace the existing tube technology with the same technology, 
the operators will not be able to increase the heating and drying performance within the same space. And from our experience, the actual preference is to keep the conditioner at the same place of installation. As you already know, the plate technology can double heat transfer area and heating sections with the identical dimensions as the, as the existing conditioners will help with easy and lower cost installation. And, and this becomes uh, um, and this becomes very important benefit in the technology swap. Solex can provide a solution for such a change and within the existing space we can offer a vertical plate conditioner that will be able to increase drying performance from or let's say 2, 3 to 3.5% 3 or up to 4% and heat the seeds to the temperature that is needed for the quality oil extraction and meal production. In addition to, to the benefits of switching to less energy demanding process of warm dehauling, some of the upper sections can be still used for the, for the heat recovery. And it means that in addition to the energy savings from the process change, actual process change, the, the project may become so self-sustainable with the additional savings in the steam consumption from the energy recovery. So from the, from the benefits of bypassing the jet rail will benefit energy managers as the indirect conditioning is always more efficient than conditioning with air that is in the, in, in the, in the direct contact with the seats, but as well maintain, maintenance managers for having less rotary equipment, uh, like huge fans for conditioning and eventual fluidization of the product. There are no need for the for very large air operators or generally lower issues with emissions as the plate technology needs amount of the air that is needed only for the moisture evacuation but not for the conditioning itself. This is done by the heat from the steam and hot water over the heat transfer plates. The same we can apply on the capacity increase requirements already on the warm dehauling process installed. Existing tube conditioners will not have due to the technology restrictions integrated heat recovery and were designed for a certain production rate. And this can be one. This, this can be one of the major bottlenecks in the production increase. So similarly, as in the case of the hot dehauling, the plate technology can provide this vital the bottlenecking when providing twice as much heat transfer area within the existing space. And in many cases, uh, many cases, the doubled heat transfer area is not fully necessary though. And the extra space when replacing old conditioners can be either used for for the extra recovery of the waste heat if available, of course, or simply plates will, will provide smaller design and still meeting new production rate requirements. Well, for so many times we heard the question about the lifetime of the plate and frank, frankly speaking it was difficult to answer because we never experienced these types of questions. So I started with the plate technology about 30 years ago. The majority of the first installations were in the fertilizer business for cooling of granulated fertilizer. And in this industry the main competing technology was a fluid bed cooler and simply the lifetime of the equipment was not an issue. However, in the oil seeds industry, we do have a variety of equipment that generally suffers from the abrasion. Um, and it is due to the nature of the seeds that are very abrasive, especially soybean or sunflower, and the, and the belts cracking at the, at the stream distribution. We can see that, uh, that, the, that, on the, that on the old rotating conditioners, the tubes need to be repaired every single year with expensive removal of uh, tube bundle revelding or inserting back into the conditioner and the same the same is uh, the same we see uh, is happening on the old vertical conditioners when the entire tube banks need to be replaced or revelded every x amount of year this in combination of material of construction that is mostly stainless steel is making the technology very costly not, not as capex but in overall total cost of ownership where the maintenance costs uh, for the replacement of the tubes needs to be included. In Solex, we can still see some original units in operation installed back in 80s, still with the original plates. 
The same we can say about first Solex all seeds units installed around 2005 2006. And our clients generally do not observe any significant abrasion. Obviously, the plates are specified for certain quality of the, of the fluids. Um, the conditions need to be isolated from the plant vibrations or, or the steam system needs to be properly designed in order to avoid water hammering. Um, but uh, in, in general, so if the general rules are followed, we can say that the plates will last uh, the same time as the conditioners itself. And we can easily talk about 15 to 20 years uh, minimum. Well, at Solex, um, we can say that our plate technology helped uh, to save significant amount of uh, CO2 and other emissions so far uh, with, the, uh, with, with, the, with the utilization of the waste heat. And out of the 60 all seeds installations, we can easily say that over 90% do actually have a heat recovery options installed and operated. And for example, for a typical 2000 tons per day canola plant, when heating the when when the heating when the heating the seeds from let's say 50 degrees Fahrenheit to 130 degrees Fahrenheit, and if it's if it's done solely by a heat recovery, the technology will help to save approximately uh, 2,400 2, tons of CO2 per year. And still, I didn't consider efficiency of a of a boiler that might uh, vary from one plate. Uh, sorry, they might vary from one installation to another. Obviously, not all the plants will have this amount of heat recovery. One production rate varies up and down, obviously. However, still, if we multiply each plant uh, CO2 savings with number of installations uh, with, the, with the heat recovery, we'll get to a total number that we are actually really proud of uh, at, at Solex. However, getting back to the oil seeds conditioning, um, as we are reaching uh, the end of this presentation, the key message is, and I would like to repeat, uh, the, the plate technology can, in a cheaper way, provide plant expansion for higher capacity with the twice as large heat transfer area to tubes. At the same time, the conditioners provide, uh, provide an option for energy recovery and payback opportunity then the plates itself do not suffer from abrasion due to the lack of vertical forces and are independently connected through flexible connections. And standard dimensions allow fitting into, into the existing space with double heat transfer area and minimum installation cost. So um, thank you very much for watching this, this presentation, for joining us today, and we, ho we hope we are able to Kind of pass the information or the for us important information about the advantages of the of the plate technology. And should you have any questions, we hope that we'll be able to answer to your satisfaction. Eventually, please uh, contact us directly for more information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stan. Thank you so much, Pedro, for your um, great presentation today. Really appreciate that. Um, for those folks who are listening in, you can type in that chat area um, and then I will go and read them off and then Pedro and Stan, you two can decide who's going to answer them. I see there's one question in the chat area. Um, is there any change in the design for units using steam or condensate? Uh, yes, generally. I'm, I'm if I if I can answer, um, generally as I explained that obviously the plates are suitable for 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 both fluids um, and for the steam it can be variety of pressures and obviously obviously hot water. Um, however, it's always good to know in 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 advance uh, since there are maximum and minimum velocity limitations inside the plates. And when designing the plate, we need to choose the number of of passes based on the velocity of uh, of both fluids so they they fit within uh, within the limits okay thank you um i see another one that's related to plates can the plates be used in combination with the tube technology uh, again if i can answer yes we have a number of installations uh, where basically we 
supplied only only the sections or or modules uh, to our clients and especially it was uh, in connection with the with the heat recovery and because we standardized uh, the, the the size of the modules uh, basically they are able to fit without any any significant installation cost and actually can can recover uh, the the waste energy and at the same time if if if, uh, if the if the operators or or our clients to to decide to exchange uh, remaining sections the the new sections can stay and basically can combine with the new sections and basically come to completely new conditioner based on the plates okay thank you for that um and um i had I had one more uh related um let me just read it is is there a benefit to installing the plate technology you described into the cold hauling process pedro stan uh, well, let me take that, this one, Stan. Uh, for uh, Coldy Hauling, uh, we have to install uh, some uh, some units, uh, especially in South America. And uh, obviously, uh, compared to uh, a standard rotary uh, drum conditioners, it provides savings uh, and also maintenance advantage. Uh, the tube technology in uh, static equipment, uh, being heaters, uh, uh, provides some issues on replacement. But in rotary conditioners, it's even worse. Uh, the degradation of those tubes, and you know, over the the years, uh, they need to be replaced as well. And um, so, the the plate technology can be used for crack uh, crack beams and in, uh, in cold hauling processes, obviously. Uh, we always recommend to have a good clean and aspiration system upstream of the of the conditioner uh, to uh, you know to facilitate uh, any potential issues uh, uh, with the flowability of the product. But uh, yeah, it's been uh, proven uh, successful in uh, in cold hauling processes. Yeah. Excellent. Anything anything else, Stan, that you wanted to add to that, or any other thoughts you had? regarding your presentation no if uh, if there are no any other questions um I, yeah i would like to repeat that we are very happy that we for this option to present uh, we feel very sorry that we couldn't attend this year's uh, aocs um, session in montreal and uh, hopefully that was uh, the, our presentation was uh, was useful for to at least to some of our uh, audience um of potential clients and uh, obviously it's very important for us to share the the message about the about the plate technology because uh, we think it's a, it's a very useful useful technology and simply there are there are the benefits of of using it excellent well we really appreciate your sharing of this knowledge it's really important to our aocs community and and um it is such a shame that we have did not um have our annual meeting this year, but this um, online learning is certainly something that um, will become more and more important for our our society and and for um, you know everything that we're we're trying to do. So we thank you, Solex, for your your presentation today. We thank you for your corporate membership, and we appreciate everyone that joined us today or that's going to listen in on the recording. On that, um, I think we're going to end today's webinar Wednesday. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.